Hello everyone, I'm Kim Aline and today is Tuesday, March 12th. You are now watching Open, a program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to you. Don't forget to stay connected with us via social media at BronxNet TV. In 1831, a group of social activists realized the importance of providing educational opportunities to individuals who were blind. They established the New York Institution for the Blind, now known as the New York Institute for Special Education. This institution offers two programs, one for the blind and visually impaired, and another for developmentally delayed children. Vocational teacher assistant Rosalind Wright and transition specialist Mary Katechis joins me to discuss the school and its efforts. Thank you both so much for joining me. Thank oh, you. Thank you for thank having you. us. Yes. Now, the New York Institute for Special Education has served individuals, as I mentioned, with disabilities since 1831. How has your organization evolved over the years to be more inclusive? Well, in uh, 1924, we moved from Manhattan to the Bronx. And in uh, 1986, uh, we became the New York Institute for Special Education because we opened up our readiness program, which also serves uh, children who are developmentally delayed, uh, like an early childhood program. So we opened up our doors from just blind to uh, more populations. Now, the organization is coming up on 190 years of service, which is an amazing accomplishment. Yes. What does this achievement mean to the NYISE? Um, I think this achievement just highlight what we do for our children and um, providing them services. I think it, we highlight it very well. It's, um, it, it's been a long road mm -hmm. and um, just to see the growth of the Institute um, and the amount of students that have gone through there and are successful is, is amazing in itself. Right. Right. I, I definitely think just like learning more about the, the organization to see um, like even today, you know, we're still the fact that our society is still trying to just provide more opportunities for those with disabilities mm -hmm. um, to see that the organization have been, has been around for 190 years is truly astonishing. So congratulations Thank on you. that accomplishment Thank again. You. Now, what services does the Institute provide for those who have visual disabilities? Um, on campus, we do have a mobility department that will train children how to travel safely in their communities to and fro work, college, or anything they want to do in life. And we have other programs that will help them navigate life, uh, such as uh, like the school store, so they can get um, experience working in a store, the school cafe, so mm -hmm. they can get experience working in a restaurant type of environment, so things like that. I mean, it really takes a village every piece, um, everybody who works there just contributes to that. Uh, we have teachers of the visually impaired who are specifically trained. Um, we have Braille, Braille everywhere. Um, like she said, orientation technology. mobility. We have a residential program to help the students um, with their ADL skills and becoming more independent. Um, every aspect of the institute works to help the kids grow so that when they do transition out of the school, they're able to um, be very successful when they leave our school. So um, we take the vision, it becomes adaptable, right? That's the simplest piece. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounds funny, but it is because of the way everyone's trained and um, they're able to transcend the disability. Now, I definitely want to expand on that um, how does the school ensure that they are prioritizing students in a way that may differ from public or maybe more traditional schools? Our mm -hmm. kids are free. Mm -hmm. They're free in our school. They're able to travel independently. They're not restricted. They're not going to be with, um, say, one individual a day. They're traveling independently. Uh, they're going from class to class. They can participate in sports. There's mm -hmm. really no opportunities for a blind and visually impaired student to participate in a basketball team or um, a soccer team. Or cheerleading or right. anything like that. Roz is also our cheer coach. Yes. Yeah, can you talk a little bit more yeah. about that experience? I think that's so like mm -hmm. exciting. Um, I've been um, doing cheer for a very long time and um, it's also like a hands-on sport when we teach them how to cheer 
and just showing them the various movements and getting them confident to go out on the mat and teaching them basic cheer skills and perhaps tumbling skills also. And it's a good experience for them because a lot of times those things are not open to our children to experience sports like that. And I want to expand on your experience a little bit more uh, because you're also an alumni, which I think <laughs> is uh, really cool. Uh, can you. you just talk about your experience going from student to staff team member? Um, my experience as a student was wonderful because uh, public school wasn't working out for me because I have a visual impairment. And I started the institute about uh, eighth grade and um, I had a wonderful education there. I was open to do sports like cheerleading. I participate on cheerleading sports, uh, learning ADL, being more independent for myself. And, and I took that with me as a teacher at the Institute and I can understand how many of our students navigate life with an impairment. That's amazing. So would you say that that experience kind of helped you um, kind of transform or just like shape the way you, you interact with the students now? Um, yes, um, I, I think I interact with them well because of, of my personal experience and what I have been taught in the field as a um, teacher uh, assistant at the Institute and just doing various programs and starting various programs to help them navigate and be successful in life. Well, She's, a She's yeah. a role model. She's a role model. Thank you. <laughs> thank now, you. Mary, can you talk a little bit more about your experience as transition counselor mm -hmm. um, and how you prepare students for higher education and life after school? You know, there, um, there's a lot of career exploration. Uh, you know, we try to foster the career awareness. Again, when students can't see, it has to be more experiential. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our PACE lab that they get to experience jobs. Uh, we have internships, volunteer opportunities. Um, so we started with the foundation of what are careers and uh, let's try everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then also we have the college piece. So we are connected to the College Now program at Hostos. So our students are able to take college credit classes to make that transition better. Because once they do that with our support, when they leave, um, they're a better able to function in school. And you know we're trying to beat the rates um, of students dropping out. We're trying to beat the rates of joblessness. Right now we have a 100% graduation rate at our school. Um, so it's step by step to get the students ready to their path. And sometimes college may not be their mm -hmm. path and work is, and that's also great and amazing because we all have different paths to lead. And um, the goal is to get the students to their dreams. Now you mentioned internships, and I understand it's a really cool internship that has a connection with NASA. Can you tell us a little bit yes. more about that? Yes, uh, we started that last year. Uh, we have a group of students, and um, they're actually working on the NASA web pages to make it accessible for other students who are, or actually the whole population of the blind and visually impaired. So they're working with a NASA scientist, and they do the uh, 100, 100 pages of the globe.gov website, and uh, they're able to assist them to make meaningful changes to the website to make it accessible for everyone. That's so. amazing. Yeah, and then also just the connection with NASA on that level. Yeah. Uh, I could just imagine like how cool that is. Yeah. Uh, so that's truly amazing. I definitely wanted to highlight that. And now, it, yeah. it actually leads to competitive jobs for them after there are real mm -hmm. jobs to do this. Mm -hmm. So um, you're taking and learning a skill that will be a lifelong skill for our students. That's awesome. Now, the school has also teamed up with outside organizations mm -hmm. um, such as the NYPD. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit more about that connection? Also great connection. Yeah. Um, they have been working on placing students with disabilities in summer jobs. So last year, we began working with them also. And uh, they had one student in IT. They had another student in the medical division. Um, and they offered these amazing opportunities with training um, and placement. This year we're also working on um, hopefully placing a student and working with the animals. So 
there's so many jobs in the NYPD mm -hmm. that are not a police officer that they're exposing our students to to give them those opportunities and um, build an equity um, for the jobs there and for our students. Mm -hmm. Roz actually got to um, <laughs> participate in some of that last summer yes, in the I, training. Yeah. Yeah, can you talk about that experience? Um, last summer I went down to the NYPD um, headquarters in Manhattan and they showed us what the kids will be doing like in clerical and what their responsibilities are going to be for the summer, how they should act, how should they dress. This is a real mm -hmm. job that they are going to and many of the officers emphasize how, um, what you need to be competitive in that field and what they expect from you. And they didn't hold back saying, yeah. you know, we're going to treat you as any other employee right coming into the NYPD summer program. Wow, so this sounds like so many amazing opportunities and, I, and I'm really glad to see that there, you know, there's an organization that is putting in the work. You know, how can people learn more about this organization, but more importantly, um, how can maybe a parent or a student um, know if this is, uh, I guess, the right community or when or how they should join? Um, they can check us out on our website www.nyisc.org. They can call us, 718-519-7000. There'll always be someone there to help you and connect you. Um, they can come in for a tour and visit the campus and see, you know, my child has, you know, is visually impaired, legally blind. Is this right for them? They could also check out our readiness program. Um, we're there to help and we're there to support kids. Mm -hmm. We also have a, a few events coming up for the 190th, right, Raz? Yeah, we have a dart show coming up. We have a gold ball tournament um, coming up and in, what, a week? Yes, a week, which is the only sport for the blind okay. in which we have all the, um, we have a lot of schools blind. coming in to mm -hmm. compete against our students. Six schools coming in from the eastern border, North, uh, North Carolina, like uh, Boston, schools like that they're coming come, going to come to the institute in the, another week to participate in that sport wow well, the, check out our website yeah. you'll be able to see everything and um, see mm -hmm. all the great things that the institute does yeah. well that's amazing I want to thank you both so much for and joining us and you know sharing a little bit more about the school and the community that you've built so thank you so much well, thank, thank you. you for having us to learn more about the New York Institute for Special Education and all the programs they offer, please go to their website at www.nyise.org. Don't go away. We'll be back with more open after this.